infoproduct.com, a third-party review site for online education classes. For those unfamiliar with the term infoproduct, it's an e-learning industry term that refers to information products such as online courses, tutorials, and workshops. So, the internet is changing the landscape of education and more and more people are turning to online courses in order to fill in knowledge gaps and enhance their skill sets. About a year ago, I became interested in selling my Amazon. I started doing a ton of research, but I quickly got overwhelmed and realized it would probably be a good idea to invest in a course that would walk me through the entire process. However, when I started looking at courses, I realized most of them were anywhere from $500 to $2,000, which represented a major purchase for me. I decided if I was going to rationalize a purchase like this, I would need to find something that had great reviews. However, when I started looking for reviews, I was extremely disappointed. The vast majority of courses out there didn't have a single review, and the ones that did were completely unverified or written by a competitor selling a competing course. Um, I started joining Facebook groups and Reddit forums that discussed various online courses, and I kept hearing the same three complaints over and over again. There was no reviews, the reviews were unverified, or the reviews were written by competitors. This causes people not to purchase courses every day, and the people who do purchase courses are doing it based on irrelevant or inaccurate information. This is where infoproduct.com comes in. Our goal is to provide consumers with a complete index of all available courses on the market, useful content, and verified reviews so they feel safe and secure when making a purchasing decision. A great way to think about us is as the Yelp of online education. Our ultimate goal is to create partnerships with the courses listed on our site so that if somebody reads a review on our site and then purchases a course, we will get a commission on that sale. To date, we've sold six courses and generated just over $1,000 in revenue. So I see potential competition mainly coming from two places. The first is from hosting platforms. They essentially give course creators a pre-made website and they handle the credit card transactions. If they started allowing reviews on the courses that are hosted with them, this would be a huge problem. However, I never see this happening because their revenue model is based on hosting fees, not course sales. So the more courses that are hosted with them, the more money they make. If they started to allow reviews, the courses that got bad reviews would just switch over to a different platform. Our current form of competition is in the form of independent blogs. These are a couple of blogs in the internet marketing space, which is by far our biggest category. And they review a lot of the same courses that we do. However, every time they review a course, towards the end of the review, they explain how their course is better and that you should just buy that instead. It's a lot like reading Burger King's review of a McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> so, why this niche? It's extremely important to understand why we chose to go with internet marketing because there's literally hundreds of categories you can start with. So first, on average, internet marketing courses are the most expensive courses out there. This is really important for two reasons. First, on average, the more expensive a course is, the more it gets searched. This drives traffic to the website. The second is because they're the most expensive, they also offer the highest commission on the course sale. So the second part is that the internet is constantly changing, and this is also super important for two reasons. Because everything changes so quickly, these courses constantly become outdated, and they need to be replaced for new courses. This makes it much easier for a young site like us to rank for on Google than for a woodworking course that's been around for 10 years. Lastly, because everything changes so quickly, there's virtually no competition from colleges and universities in this area. By the time somebody writes a textbook, gets it published, and actually puts it into the hands of students, the information is already outdated. I took the one internet marketing class in Zoo offers last year, and the textbook was from 2009. It was a lot more like a history class than a real internet marketing class. <laughs> so, in terms of the market opportunity, this is based on a Forbes study from 2017. Online course sales in the United States were 46 billion. About 27% of that market is non degree seeking classes, so these are classes not affiliated with colleges and universities. And then about 17% of that market is business and marketing classes, which is my entire focus. This is expected to more than double over the course of the next five years, and I believe infoproduct.com can play a huge role in providing customers with the information they need to confidently make a purchase. So I started working on this in July, and basically I was just writing descriptions of courses in dozens of categories. Uh, pretty quickly I realized that the vast majority of the search traffic was coming from the internet marketing courses, so I decided to focus on that. Around Christmas break, I realized it would be impossible to scale this if I was the only person adding courses. So I created a login experience that would allow anyone to create an account on the site and add their course. Currently, I spend most of my time onboarding course creators and collecting feedback from them. I'm also working on a badge campaign, like right there. So as soon as a course gets enough positive reviews on our site, I give them a badge that looks like that to display on their site, similar to Trustpilot. This not only gives us brand awareness, but it allows us to drive traffic through link building. And then towards the second part of this year, I want to build out features that incentivize course creators to get on the platform, the biggest of which is creating our own affiliate program so that we can monetize every course on the platform.
So this is just a high-level overview of how I created the revenue projections. I took the estimated site traffic per year, the estimated conversion rate on that traffic, uh, the percent of courses on the site I actually expect to have an affiliate partnership with, and this is our current average commission for sale. So in year one, I only expect to get revenue from course sales. This is strictly through an affiliate commission. In year two, I also want to add a paid membership feature. So this would not be for consumers, but it would be for course creators, giving them more control over their listing, the ability to have access to analytics, video, and more control over their content. And then in year three, I also think we could introduce advertising. We actually had several people already ask if they could advertise on the site. Um, so in terms of projected expenses, currently I have just over $2,000 invested into this. This is mainly for the domain, uh, some development work on the badges and hosting. Going forward, I see the three biggest expenses being continued web development, advertising, and content. Um, and the biggest expense this year in terms of web development will be creating our own affiliate network, which I'll talk about in a minute. So if we were to receive an investment today, the majority of that would go towards development. Um, I built the entire site out myself basically by watching YouTube videos, and while everything works, it's pretty utilitarian. I need a developer to come in and help me clean up the login experience and help me build out features that are going to incentivize course creators to get on the platform. The biggest part of this is creating our own affiliate network. Uh, the way that we get course commissions is through like basically a tracking cookie, if you don't know what that is. But basically, if many of the small and medium-sized courses don't have their own affiliate network. So that makes it impossible for us to get a commission on the sale. So I want to create our own affiliate network so that as soon as a course lists their course on our site, we have a way to immediately create an affiliate partnership with them so we can generate revenue. Only about 8% of the courses on the site right now actually have an affiliate partnership with us. If we had affiliate partnerships with 100% of the courses on the site, we would have made way more money so far. Um, and then I also would want to spend some money on copywriting and content creation. I have about 100 courses I want to add to the site, but I'm spending most of my time onboarding course creators. So I want to hire a couple of freelance copywriters to add descriptions of these courses to the site. This will not only help us ramp up search traffic, but it will also give us the biggest index of private internet marketing courses anywhere on the internet. Um, and then towards the end of the summer, I also want to advertise on the Reddit pages where people are complaining about these courses and on LinkedIn. Um, so in terms of current traction, we're currently getting around 140 users a day. This is completely organic. We haven't spent anything on advertising. People are just finding us on Google. Uh, we have done $1,000 in revenue. This is based on six course sales. We have 30 course partnerships. So while I have over 250 courses listed on the site, I've actually had 30 people create an account and add their course. And we're seeing increased traffic every week. And as we continue to add courses, content, and links, these numbers are only going to continue to go up. Um, so a little bit about me. Obviously doing this, I have some web design experience. I'm also currently an SEO intern at Veterans United, so I spend most of my time trying to figure out what an article needs to say, if it's going to rank for a particular keyword, and in a lot of ways that's what I'm doing right here. Uh, I also have my own e-commerce business through Amazon, and while that's obviously a very different business model, my strategy is basically the same in that I try to find something that people are complaining about, and I try to fix that problem, and I think I'm doing that here. Uh, and then lastly, last semester I also had the opportunity to serve as a team lead for the Missouri Innovation Center's Investing in Startups class. Um, and this allowed me to take a team of six people through the due diligence process of several companies um, that have been in Missouri. And this was a great learning experience and also let me kind of look through the eyes of an investor when evaluating my own company. So that is all I have. Thank you. Not sure I've followed everything. Sure. So you've got uh, you're attracting course creators to uh, to the platform, but then uh, you talked at the beginning about the unreliability of reviews. Mm -hmm. So where do the reviews come in with with uh, with what you're doing? So you've got sure. the course creators. So the course the creator lists. So the course creator lists their course, and then they have their students list reviews on. And we verify that by them having by having them send in a picture of the receipt when they leave a review to make sure that it's verified and not just a fake review. So they're active students or they're just people who took the course. This isn't like anything to do with a college or university. This is like someone who's looking to get a promotion or get a job or learn a new skill set. They want something that's immediately beneficial. It's someone who wants to be able to do the books for their business, not take a bunch of accounting classes at a college. Similar to the question I had of the difference between course creation and actually being a house for courses to upload. So let me look at the courses to up, 
upload. Um, is the ratings based on a, a rubric criteria? I know it's not for any advanced degree, or is it just customer ratings? Will uh, you influence those ratings, or is it pure just it's customer? The, it's based on customer reviews. The ranking is entirely based on customer reviews. It has nothing to do with us. So there's no criteria. It's just someone's opinion. Yes. What does the curation of the reviews look like for you? Um, so there's something where it's like quality of product, like reasonable reasonableness of price, um, and then there's like pros and cons, and you give it a review of one out of five stars, and you can write things in there. That's what it looks like. And based on the star rating, will depend on your ranking on the site, depending on whatever your category is. <coughs> So you mentioned that among uh, the competitors out there, that um, it, that they don't do reviews because they just focus on the, the sales side of yeah, it. Yes, so like if you know what WordPress is, that helps yeah. you build the website. Those right. hosting companies are like WordPress, but they're specifically geared towards online video courses. But you said something about those uh, uh, the the ones that don't perform is go to a different platform. If they allowed reviews, they would just switch to a different hosting platform. That, that doesn't happen because none of them currently allow reviews, which is part of the problem. None of those hosting companies allow any sort of review. So what's to keep, uh, I mean, why would uh, somebody who's getting bad reviews on your uh, platform stay there? Um, I mean, I think at some point there will like definitely be a little bit of blood in the water. I mean, the idea is that people don't buy scam courses. So I mean, I expect that to happen at some point. but. I think it's a lot more trustworthy to have like an independent site than just like quotation marks on your landing page that say like I learned so much, you know. So you would keep, I mean, if, even if the courses that get bad reviews, you keep them on there because oh yeah, you, you're, you're not. And as much as I mean, this stuff gets outdated really frequently. So I mean, eventually there's going to be a lot of outdated stuff on there that people just aren't looking at. But it'll just be an index of the courses. Mm -hmm. 